Hello and great to have your company once again on Fox Sports Lab NFL. I'm Matthew Campbell, back from a week off last week. Thanks to Ben Dixon for helping out. We're at uh, conference championship level. What does that mean? It means there's four teams left. It's exciting. There's two great games coming up. James Clements joins me as always. James, great to have you. Four teams left. Now, there's a bit of similarity about them, isn't there? Because if we look back at the last five Super Bowls, there's been seven teams. Four of them are still in. I love it. It's such a great setup, Matty. It's like literally, this is what we have NFL for. Give us the four best teams in the second last weekend of the season. And I'm super psyched. I think we got rid of the uh, the chaff this past week. We're <laughs> about to talk about that. I love it. Uh, we'll talk about that because we're, uh, what we'll do this week, we'll take a little bit of a look back to what happened in the divisional playoff round last week. Uh, Freddie Mitchell, as always, will join us very shortly from Philadelphia. I'm sure they're all flying over there. And also coming up, we'll take a look at the two big games, the AFC and the NFC Championship games. And I mentioned Philadelphia. They are going beautifully. They had the week off and they came back and they absolutely destroyed the New York Giants and Freddie Mitchell, uh, former uh, Super Bowl man himself, joins us. Freddie, from your point of view, how's the vibe in Philly, mate? You must be up and about. Everybody's thinking one more week and two weeks time we're into the Super Bowl. There's no refunds here. Our tickets are bought. We're going to be going to Arizona and we're going to win the Super Bowl again. <laughs> and it's going to be called a dynasty the next year and the next year and the year after. you got to feel good about what we saw. I know that James mentioned last week there was a bit of, when you have a week off, there's a bit of rust or rest. Gee, they came out and they played hard early. And that game was over very, very quickly, wasn't it, against New York? I didn't even know what team that was. I was like, man, this is the Eagles team that you see on paper, and they're actually putting it into action, putting it into play. I love these guys. I love the, the team camaraderie. I love the way they're gelling. We need to get the ball to Brown a little bit more. He was three for 22, but I love this team right now. They're, they're stacked, and they're playing like it. Well, we'll talk about their upcoming uh, game against the 49ers shortly, but if we look back, James, at a little bit what we saw, uh, you look back, you've been tipping beautifully, but we all thought the Bills had beat the Bengals. We go, we go to Buffalo. It's snowing. No one gives the Bengals a chance. But no one told Joe Burrow off an offensive line that he didn't even know their names. And uh, they made the Bills look pretty ordinary. That's uh, Joe Burrow, the best remaining QB in these playoffs at the moment. I'll tell you that much. On Matty. form, for sure. With a uh, hobble Patrick Mahomes. I think that's kind of the big story to come out of this weekend. You've got a hobble Mahomes on the AFC side. You've got Joe Burrow. You've got that Cincy team that just went into Buffalo and manhandled them, which, to be honest, you shouldn't expect but that's exactly what happened. Like this sort of banged up Cincinnati O-line held up fine. They look awesome. The craziest part is they're repeating what they did last year. Mm, Second half of the season, yep. we're going to steamroll everybody. We'll make it to a soupy and away we go. Um, but that was awesome. Like what a, what a setup of a game that was. The snow game. I love a snow game. Freddie's out there. It's all cold up in Philly, no doubt at the moment, but there's nothing better than a snow game. Uh, love that game. Awesome vibes. Cincinnati rolling. Pretty cool. But, I mean, Buffalo, what a bunch of frauds. <laughs> Freddie, saying, what do you think? Saying, what saying, a bunch of frauds. He's saying a bunch of frauds, Buffalo. But that's three years in a row we've had high expectations of them getting through to a championship playoff game, and they haven't. Are they missing the window here? Are they, are they losing their opportunities? I think that they're giving up tendencies. I think that that's what's going to happen. They know how to play them. And, and, and as crazy as it may seem, you know, Joe Burrow is the man. He is the best quarterback in the game. And uh, like James said, but I really, you know, you got to, you got Hurts have done his thing too because he showed that without, without him playing, they can't win. So his part into the Eagles organization is great. I, if they beat the Bills like that convincingly, they're gonna be, they're gonna beat the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm all over the Bengals, but we'll get to that shortly. Uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, the other game that uh, I guess we we talk about teams that have disappointed. The 49ers defense we know is very, very good. They make the Cowboys look ordinary. Uh, they held Dak Prescott to uh, just over 200 yards. They didn't really have an offense at all, the Cowboys. That's right. What is it? 12 straight times that they've made the playoffs and not made a title game. Yeah. I know that Freddie's absolutely loving this, <laughs> but he also loves his Dakota Prescott call from last week. He was right up the money with the, ah, watch, look, Dak Prescott is who we think he is. And he had a great game yeah. the week before. Yeah. More power to him. But of course, throws two interceptions in that game. Probably should have had four. Like, if we're being honest, there was easily two other catches that should have been taken by the Eagles. Off they go. They steamrolled them. The Cowboys, what an absolute train wreck of a sort of end of their season. I feel like that was, look, 
they are the sort of team that promises so much and delivers so little year on year on year. And I know that Freddie's going to be beside himself about watching that Dallas team fall <laughs> apart. Uh, Freddie, I was talking to James before. He, he, he talked about the fact that you as a Philly fan would probably be like to be playing the Cowboys this weekend so you could knock them out. Absolutely. We wanted them. To, we wanted to actually play them because just like we played the Giants, we would have done the same thing that we did to the Giants. We know their style of play. We played them before. We know that their weaknesses and we could take advantage of it. You know, this San Francisco team, like last week, they scare me. They scare me because you know that the defense with the defense of uh, 49ers, you saw that the interceptions were, I think, a linebacker and in, in, in the very middle and their linebacking squad and their defensive coordinator, the best of the best to me, and they're not even getting that much uh, praise about it, and it really scares me. Yes, we'll talk about the 49ers defense very shortly. We'll take a break. That's the game we're going to look at next. It's the NFC Conference Championship between the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco, San Francisco, I should say, 49ers. The betting brand for sports fans. That's better. Gamble responsibly. <laughs> Time to talk NFC. The Eagles, who are the number one seeds, are taking on the San Francisco 49ers. James, I think both the championship games are going to be totally different types of games or styles of games, if we like. But what we're going to see here from the, the, uh, the Eagles, the spread's only one and a half. The early support says that Philly can win this game. But they're going to run the ball against a, a Niners defense that knows they're going to run the ball. Exactly. This is such a great setup, Matty. You've got two top defenses in the NFL. You've got two top five offenses in the NFL. You've got two of the top 10 rushing attacks in the NFL. It's such a great setup. And as you said, like it's very different to what we're going to see in the AFC. This is going to be a defensive tussle. I'm stoked on this because, I mean, we saw the way that the Niners just handled the Cowboys last week. You talk about that rushing attack. Yep. And it's like, we're going to try to rush. And the Niners will be like, I mean, you can try. <laughs> you can definitely try. Like, we'll see what happens after, but you can try your hardest. Um, and that's probably one of the things about this sort of setup. It's like, we're going to learn a lot, I think, about Philly. Because I think you look at both of these teams, very well-rounded teams, as I mentioned. Like, if you look at their stats, they match up so well. Uh, I think if we sort of learn anything about this Philly team this week, as Freddie sort of alluded to in the first segment, AJ Brown, quiet week last week. Mm -hmm. Can they then go, well, maybe we'll sort of balance it out, get a bit throwing going, if we can open up this run attack. I don't know, how's Freddie feeling about it, do you think? Well, I guess that's the question, Freddie, isn't it? We know that the running game is good, and, and Jalen Hurts running is good as well. He, he sets into those plays beautifully. They're 15-1 and one with Hurts, but what's plan B for Philly if, if that San Francisco defence stops that running game? I mean, for a quarterback, and especially for a quarterback, a young quarterback, you have to go to the tight end. That's the easiest uh, target in the field, on the field. That's the easiest target. If you're not hitting your tight end and opening up the run game for everything else, and they're going to do a lot of screens with uh, with uh, Smith and stuff like that. So they're going to have to hit their tight end. If they can't hit their tight end, which scares me because you know what? San Francisco defense goes against a great tight end, the greatest tight end in the game, in practice, every single day. So this is going to be a hard, hard situation for the Philadelphia Eagles. Your thoughts on that, James? I mean, we, we always talk about Kelsey, we talk about Kittle. What have I got it for uh, the Eagles? I mean, do they have the, the capability there? Well, he's like a great sort of like uh, pressing case of emergency yeah. button for Hurts, right? Yeah. That's exactly what he is, and Hurts like uses him really well. Because that's that combination, as Freddie alludes to, Hurts can use his legs, Hits got, hits got it across the middle if he's got nothing to uh, find himself. But I mean, this is kind of speaks to how well-rounded Philly are. Like, they've just got so many different attack sort of avenues for you. They've got Miles Sanders, uh, Kenny Gainwell, even Boston Scott, the giant killer, comes yeah. out and smashes. All he does is beat New York and goes home. That's it, <laughs> just cashes his check and like, my work here is done, I love that. <laughs> um, but it is like, what, 70 sacks this season for the uh, Eagles. Their defense is absolutely stacked, they're awesome. Uh, the offense, Miles Sanders, Gainwell, AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, it's just so, so set up to go, right, what are our avenues of attack on this San Francisco defense? I don't know, we'll find out. Their weaknesses though, Philly, that's kind of the thing. There's not too many. You can maybe try to run on them as we alluded to. They're 16th, I think, in the NFL um, in terms of yards per game, giving up 121. And this is a Niners team that can run the ball. We've seen that. They've yep. got a couple of different uh, sort of Swiss Army knives that will you know, try to run it down your throat. But 
eight and two at home this season, this Eagles team. Absolutely, seven and three against the spread. That's awesome. They yeah. are absolutely on fire. And what I like about the Eagles is they've been able to, when they have a good win at home, they back it up with another win. They are consistently winning and they do well. Uh, uh, Freddie, back to you as far as, uh, let's flip the coin and talk about the Niners. Uh, what are the, What is the their strength that Philly has to stop? I mean, can you stop Boza? I mean, he is one of the best guys out there in the game, and that's scary to me. I said, uh, alluded to this last time with the linebackers that they have. Their linebackers are great. They already played against the they already played against the Cowboys with great receivers out there, and they really shut them down. And they know how to to, to guard a tight end. So it's really really scary. I need for everybody to give the defensive coordinator which will be a head coach real soon, maybe next year, uh, they have to give him his props because his game plans, the way he disguises his coverages, you think they're covered too, but they're really, man, he's doing a great job. So it really, they're matched up. Both teams are matched up pretty evenly. I mean, it's, it's all gonna come down to who has the better game plan. Who has the better defensive game plan? Who has the better offensive game plan? Because the players are pretty even. Who wins, Freddie? I have the Eagles winning. I have the Eagles winning, and I have the Eagles winning by a field goal. It's going to be a tight, low-scoring game, but I think that I think that it could be a 24-21 game. All right, Eagles by three for Freddie. Who wins, James, and why? And what sort of spread are we talking? Well, we've talked about this Niners team. I just think we're going to look back on this team and go, they had all those dudes on offense <laughs> at once. Are you kidding? Like it is crazy when you think about like uh, the great Niners teams of old. Same sort of vibes about this one. You've got McCaffrey as the yep. running back. You've got Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. George Kittle, you forget about him. He's one of the best tight ends in the game. And yep. like he's almost an afterthought. Obviously, the one weakness we've got to think about is Brock Purdy. He's Purdy good, but is he good enough? Is that, there's a little bit of extra pressure now at a championship level. Going into the link to try to beat the Eagles, I think they can do it. I'm going to have to go against Freddie here. I just Ooh. trust this Niners defense just that little bit more. Yeah. And I think during this season, we have seen the Eagles as explosive as they've looked at times. This is the one team they very clearly did not want to play at any point, basically. They're just like, we want no bar of this. But you've seen their offense sort of just hit a brick wall on the odd occasion throughout this season. Mm -hmm. The Niners just grind games out and win. Yeah, if they win, it's going to be low-scoring games. Exactly. Yeah. So I think the unders is the play in this one. Yep. I like the Niners at the line and head-to-head. -head. I just trust this defense a little bit more. Um, but I do think like it sets up as a really fun sort of setup. I think if we're going to go a bit of a uh, same-game multi, which there, we maybe, can, uh, I'd probably lean into Jalen Hurts running one in. Yep. So an anytime touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, same sort of vibe on the other side. And Kittle, 40 plus yards. That's that tight end sort of thing. What we're talking about. Even that out, I reckon get a really, really good game. And I think the Niners just eke it out. I might go 24-21, Niners. All right, so difference of opinion there. Uh, Freddie's going for a three-point win to the Eagles. James, a three-point win to the 49ers. Uh, we're going to take, take a break and we're going to talk about the other game. And I've got a funny feeling there might be some, well, difference of opinion in that one as well. We're going to talk uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals next. The betting brand for sports fans. That's better. Gamble responsibly. Time to talk AFC and the Chiefs for the fifth year in a row get through to the conference championship game. And it is a repeat of last year, James, where the Bengals surprised everyone and beat Kansas. The line actually favours the, or well, the spread actually favours the, the Bengals at the moment. It's small. I think by the time we get to game, town, game time, it's going to be even both teams. It's a very even game. A couple of points to talk about. Mahomes' ankle is the big one. That's the talking point. Is he going to be 100% fit? Is that why there's a bit of a spread towards the Bengals? 100%. Like, you can't, if you can't bank on Pat Mahomes just being Patrick Mahomes, then that's where you're going to see that spread move back towards the Bengals. Because the way that they proved that their defense is solid enough to sort of deal with like the Buffalo Bills like they did last week, but also more importantly, their O-line standing up to that Bills defense yeah. was more, more impressive basically than anything, I think, to come out of that game. Uh, but with Mahomes hobbled, like that's almost going to swing the line completely because if he's on one leg, if he's one, two, you know, the three-step drop, uh, three drop turns into the three-hop drop, Matty, 
<laughs> the it's three up drop. It's gonna be a little bit harder to win that one, yeah. I reckon. But uh, that's why you see this one get so so tight before the sort of game time. Is that is that a dance that in the Clements family at Christmas? The three hop drop. I'd like yeah. to see that a little bit later on. Let's get back to Freddie. Freddie, all the talk about is is the quarterbacks here, but I got a funny feeling. Yes, they're both great quarterbacks, and they'll they'll have good games. I got a funny feeling though. It's going to be the best defense who puts quickest or bigger pressure on those quarterbacks that'll win this game. They're going to put so much pressure on Mr. Mahomes that he is going to want to call all the dogs, call any help emergency that he can get because they're going to pressure him. They're going to see, they're going to test that ankle out right away. And think about it. All of the highlights that you have from Patrick Mahomes, he's running and making things happen and he's buying extra time. He's not going to have that now. It's going to be, a, he's going to have to do something and Andy Reid's going to have to go back and evaluate his situation. And if they can beat Mahomes healthy, pretty good chance they can beat him hurt. Yeah, I like that theory because I'm uh, big on the Bengals for this game and the, uh, I think they can do that given the fact that, uh, as Freddie just said, they've beaten them three in a row, including that game last year we talked about, but this season they've beaten them. And Joe Burrows has said this is a more complete team than last year. They surprised us last year, but there's a bit of self-belief that they've got Kansas' measure. Yeah, it's weird that they're Kansas City's kryptonite. Yeah, like, well, if you like. It yeah. really is. Yeah. That's the exact sort of uh, sort of team set up that Kansas City just find really hard because they're just so balanced across each of their lines. And, I mean, this is the best offense in the league, this Chiefs team. Like, they're absolutely explosive. But as Freddie's just talked about, right, like, if you're being just constantly harassed and, like, being played off your game, then it makes it really hard. But my favorite part of this is, Maddie. Mm. this is where we learn. This is, this, is the, this is the sports movie montage. We see Pat Mahomes' ankle do these ones. Yeah. And then he comes back and still gets through to the Super Bowl. Probably does. Ever wins it. <laughs> um, but I think we learn a lot about Mahomes in this uh, game because Freddie talks about how uh, he's always sort of moving in the pocket, running around, scrambling, just creating something from nothing. We also did see in the second half last week him just being able to control the pace of that game, which I thought was really important for them winning um, down the stretch against the Jags. And the way that he was able to just go, ah, I don't have a leg but I'll throw a jump pass. What do you think? It's just, he's so inventive and so crazy and so good that, look, if you can just keep finding Travis Kelsey underneath, like you're gonna be making, uh, making hay while the uh, weather is sunny, I guess we say. <laughs> and, uh, but it was incredible to see. And I think the Bengals can slow him down, obviously. But this offense is so good and so multifaceted. Oh, I kind of still like KC a bit, but yeah. anyway. You, just, you were talking about it doesn't have a leg. It made me think of an old Monty Python sketch. Oh, just grow back then, will it? Uh, but it doesn't. Um, Freddie, uh, we you talked about tight ends, plan Bs. Kelsey's plan A for, for Patrick Mahomes. Comes off 14 receptions last week, two touchdowns. We know what he's capable of. Can they stop Kelsey? Uh, I don't think they, I, I think actually, you know what? They can stop Kelsey. They did three games before this, you know, so they can't stop him. And, and, and what James was saying about, you know, the, the how he was able to control the game and stuff like that, he controlled the game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, which, which should have been a gimme win, which me and James picked. So it's going to be a hard, hard uh, task for, because everybody knows who's getting the ball now, you know, you don't have, uh, the, the receiver that they had yes uh, last year to go in and do that. But, I mean, it's going to be a hard, hard game. And I, I, don't, I don't see Kansas City being able to come out of this. Is there any stats that back up or the, the, that are important about the Chiefs, apart from how good Patrick is on one leg or two? I mean, they are eight and one at home. <laughs> Still pretty good. Yeah. Like That's kind of one of those things where you go, yeah, they're just really good at Arrowhead. And I think... You've seen this defense be really sort of middling a lot of this year for Kansas City, but then really crank up it's the noise up towards the end, yeah. in the second half. And that's kind of going to be the thing, right? So with this Cincinnati off offensive line, they stood up pretty well against Buffalo last week. I think we see a really good defensive showing from Kansas City. I think they've been so good basically since about the start of December defensively that this is sort of like the game where it's all on the line. Um, but if you want some stats there, Matty, I I'll tell you what. We mentioned this, the uh, the touchdowns and uh, tight ends. Three is how many Cincinnati gave up this year to tight ends. Three. Is that all? It's amazing. So, oh, this also, could be the game right there. This is this could be the game because, as Freddie's talked about, if they can't get it to Kelsey, then yeah. Kansas City probably going to be in trouble. But, I mean, the Bengals have won, what, four of their last five as an underdog in January. That's like that classic stat because that's all they did last year. They just rolled through teams. Yeah. They're doing it again. Um, they've won their past seven against teams that are winning records. Won their past eight against other teams from the AFC. 
Like Cincinnati just look dangerous, they look scary. They're beating the Chiefs three straight, obviously. Thing is, bottom but, 10. Is a big butt coming. Bottom 10 <laughs> against the pass as well, though. So I just sort of see Mahomes just sort of getting enough. And I think this defense just puts enough pressure on them that the Kansas City Chiefs at home just ride that wave of emotion and just sneak out the win. You're Kansas. I'm Cincinnati. It's 1-0 here in Australia, Freddie. Give us your tip. I'm going Cincinnati. Yes! High ankle, <laughs> high, high, high ankle sprain. I mean, I can't do it. And you got to understand, the, the Bengals, they, they understand what happened to them last year. They're like a woman scorned. They're never going to forget that. So the, they still have paybacks. You know, the, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs, they don't have any paybacks. You know, they, 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 they've been there. They've been to the game and they've ate. They're, they're, they're not hungry dogs anymore. I really think since he's going to win this game. I'm with Freddie, so he's got what's two against one, James, but what about a, a same game multi for us? Well, I think, you know, first off, I think we see uh, a reverse of last year's score, 27-24, KC. Yep. Uh, but the same game, I think Kelsey still gets in for one touchdown. I think his yards go the under. Um, but the touchdown for Kelsey, Jamar Chase finds the end zone again. Okay. I think he and Burrow, that connection is absolutely special going all the way back to LSU. But also Burrow, 300 plus passing yards. I think they sort of just run out of uh, running options and just try to sling it. That receiving corpse of Cincinnati is absolutely next level. Kansas City, I mean, they'll try to slow them down, but Cincinnati's receivers are really good. So I think he gets to the 300 passing yards, but the Chiefs just eke out that win. So I think Kelsey anytime touchdown, Chase touchdown, Burrow 300 plus yards. I'd steer clear of the uh, Mahomes passing yards as well though, because you just don't know about that ankle. It's exactly right. Freddie, uh, great to have you on the program as always. Uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you next week. And also, given the fact that uh, James has gone against you, we look forward to you coming out and whoever wins that game, uh, someone can shout lunch. Absolutely. And James, if Burrow throws for 300 pass, uh, passing yards, he's going to win that game. The 300 passing yards, he is going to win. I can't wait for next week. This is the beauty of sports. You get to find out who's going to win, who's right, and who's wrong. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Freddie. Freddie Mitchell joins us, as always, from Philadelphia as we get closer and closer to the Super Bowl. Just before we go, um, if you had to pick now with four left to try and you know, sort of inch in early, get in early as far as who wins the Super Bowl. Who would you pick right now? Probably still the Niners. If I'm going to pick them to beat the Eagles, I think the winner comes out of the AFC, out of the NFC this year. I'm going the Bengals. And no surprise there. That I, I've, I've jumped on the bandwagon, <laughs> the Burrow bandwagon. Thanks, mate, as always. My pleasure, Matty. This is great. Yep, it is great to be talking NFL with James Clement and, of course, Freddie Mitchell. We'll be back next week. You can uh, subscribe below or follow us on socials and hope you've enjoyed. Fox Sports Lab NFL, the Super Bowl's not far away. The betting brand for sports fans. That's better. Gamble responsibly.